Yo, 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 my friends, welcome to episode 69 of Regen Rovers. That was quite an enthusiastic introduction, I know, but I'm pumped today. I'm in the mood to beat the team that I support in real life, West Ham United. It's it's the under-23s. It's the Checker Trade Trophy. Checker Trade, CheckerTrade.com. Yep, so... If, no one cares about this competition, but it's a winnable competition for us, I do believe. Last season we did crash out despite beating Fulham under 23s 4-1. This season, it's a tough group, I must say. We do have West Ham, Portsmouth and Charlton. So, tough teams to get past. This might actually be the easiest game, believe it or not. <laughs> How are you anyway? Please let me know in the comment section below. I'm actually feeling happy. Not not that it's a surprise or that I don't feel happy very often. I'm generally happy most of the time, to be honest. But I'm just, I don't know, I'm feeling energetic all of a sudden. Uh, we've been unbeaten since the last episode. Last episode, first episode of the, the eighth season was a little bit disappointing, especially the league game against Oxford. A little bit more positive against Ipswich, scoring from... Um, Mohamed's two shots. Since then, although the results look alright, it's been a little bit of a struggle, I must say, apart from this revenge against Morecambe, which was very, very pleasing. Unfortunately, it wasn't 7-1, but we were very comfortable in this game against Morecambe. You can see we dominated the match 17 shots to 6. Uh, but in the other games, we certainly haven't been that dominant. I'm not sure what went, what, how this happened, uh, but I'm bloody pleased it did happen. And Larry Uda signed on a free, remember, in the summer. Scored two goals. He put us 1-0 up with a ninth-minute penalty. So we don't need to rely on Marlow anymore. Uda's uh, got 13 on penalty taken. Same as Marlow, but he's a striker. He's a finisher. He's got 16 on finishing. So that was his first goal of the season. I feel a bit more confident with him taking penalties. He then put us 2-0 up in the 39th minute. This is Joe Mohamed running down the left-hand side. Put it a ball in and Udda with the finish at the near post to put us 2-0 up. And then Lee Orford got his first goal of the season in the second half, in the 58th minute. This was an interesting bit of goalkeeping, I must say. It's, it's an effort from outside the box, but it wasn't particularly powerful. Hit with good placement into the corner, but the keeper really should have saved that. They did get a goal back, but I was very pleased with the performance, particularly from Larry Udda. Guillermo Diaz, our Spaniard, also managed to get an assist, as did... Mohamed. So, good, good win. We then really struggled to a 0-0 draw against Shrewsbury Town, who at the time were top of the table. Defensively, they held firm. Defensively, we held firm. They had more shots. They had two more clear-cut chances than us. They had 1%, well, 51% possession. They they were the better team overall. We didn't really have any chances. Danny Bay at the back was solid, 7.4. Defensive partnership seems to be working well between Bay and Walker. Fullbacks wise, it's not as good, although Greg Cross did put in a good performance today. I am struggling to get the fullbacks to perform well, and I've made a couple changes ahead of this West Ham game as a result of um, recent performances. We did then get a 2 2 draw against Notts County. Coming from behind, uh, we did go 1-0 up though through Larry Uda. Let's have a look at the goal. Unfortunately, Lee Orford picked up a 3-4 to four week injury in this game. So we're going to miss him. It's a good finish at the near post from a Greg Cross. Cross. And they then went 2-1 up through Adam Campbell and Oliver McBurney. Great name. However, Uda, 85th minute. Got the equaliser, pushed forward, and we, we were really struggling this game, I must say. It was a right old struggle to get anything out of this, but Drury did well down the left, and Udda with the finish. He's got 60 on finishing. He's the best finisher in the team, if we look at him. He's a quality striker. And why is why has that vanished? Come back, Larry. And I'm very pleased to have able to get hold of him. He's, he's got bite as well, 17 aggression up front. He's going to cause problems for the defence. 13 strength. He could be a top player for us for, for many years. I do feel. We then managed to get a good 1-0 win against Northampton Town. And I, mean, I say it was good, but it was once again a struggle. Both teams failed to create a huge number of shooting opportunities. Although we did have two clear-cut chances and three half chances. They had two half chances. We were lucky to get the win. It was a penalty from Uda that won the game. Being quite fortunate with uh, penalty decisions. 
well, I think there have been penalties. I've just been, we've been lucky to get a few penalties, I suppose. Uh, Kevin Miguel did get sent off in the 74th minute, second yellow card. So we went defensive and we managed to hold on. Bayern Walker at the back, very solid. I, I think I'm doing my, the fullback a disservice. They actually got decent ratings in this game as well. I'm not sure what I'm thinking. I, just, I don't know. They just The goals that have been scored against us, it's down the wings. And what I'm doing is I've decided to sit narrower just to hold the back four bits further like closer together teams seem to be getting through our defense although they're getting good ratings teams are able to penetrate the back four for whatever reason we'll make a change we'll see if it works against west ham for the checker trade trophy you're not allowed to make two i think you can make maximum of five changes sit from the league game to the checker tra trade trophy game otherwise you get find like five grand or something so i have made a couple changes since the league game we've, we've put stephen dean back into the team for his third appearance and um, he's the guy uh, the new right back we signed for a bit of money uh, by and walker same back two we need to to keep them working well together walker's actually got a decent average rating for once greg cross he's got a couple assists he's done all right at left but there have been a couple of crosses down the right that he's just He's just dived in for tackles and failed to deal with them. Um, Christian Marley comes into the team for his first start of the, the season. Dip has not been great on that side, I must say. He doesn't quite suit the attacking central midfield role quite the same. He has got an OK average rating. It's just not quite up to the standard we expect from him. Uh, Paddy Murray's not been great in the ball winning midfield role, I must say. He needs to improve. I thought it'd be solid for us, but he hasn't really been. Diaz, he's got a decent average rating, 6.93. He's doing all right in the deep line playmaker role and has adjusted to English football relatively well so far, I think. Up front, Craig Palmer, who has been awful, 6.44 average rating. That's the worst in the team. Don't know what's going on with him, considering the end of the season he had last year. Maybe it's just he prefers the end of the season, maybe. He hates the beginning of the season. He's been on holiday to, to Mauritius or somewhere, come back and is struggling to, to burn off that holiday fat maybe. Larry Udda in the middle, the, the in-form man, five goals in five games, 7.5 average rating, what a hero. And Joe Mohamed on the left, he scored two goals against Ipswich, hasn't done anything other than that apart from getting an assist or two. Um, in fact, how many has he got? He's got one assist. Greg Cross has got the most assists. You can see top goal scorers there. Top average rating. We just sort it through. You can have a quick look. I haven't made any more signings, I don't think. Let me just check. Uh, we, we loaned out Ben Mann to Bath. Nope, no one else has come in. Transfer window's gone. I could probably loan players, I think that's, and sign free players, but that's it. Um, I just I couldn't find someone that I thought would improve the team. So I'm sticking with what we have. We're seventh in the league. It's all right. It's actually better than I thought after that first loss against Oxford United. We're on eight points, two wins, two draws, plus one goal difference. We're three behind the leaders, Wimbledon. Of course, it's going to be a tough season. It's going to be tough at this level, but I have every confidence in this squad. It's interesting how you guys, when, when I take on a team that you support in real life, you sort of feel conflicted as to who to support. You don't know whether you should support the team you support in real life. That's interesting. I don't know if that's because... That's a good sign because you're so involved in the series. You're actually really hoping your team can do well in this series as well. And you don't want them to be embarrassing and get relegated to conference or something. Oh, West Ham going for 4-3-3 incidentally. At the same time, I find it strange. Um, I understand why, why you do get behind your team. But also I find it strange because it is only a game, remember? Um, I... I've never... I mean, when, when I take on West Ham in Football Manager, I don't care. I just want to beat them. I want to... I'm managing my team. Everything else is out the window. I don't really care. It's, I know I feel a little bit sad when they get relegated to the championship, for example. But it's not the end of the world um, because it is only a game. It's not happening in real life. But then I guess when you get so immersed, it feels like real life. It's a new parallel universe. At the same time, who's to say you support that team in the parallel universe? Surely you're just a full-on Regen Rovers fan. You should be getting behind, going into the snake pit. We're going into the Jack Young stand, having some prawn sandwiches. And getting behind the younglings. Come on, you younglings. We've still got Sylvester the Snake. He's not quite as involved. George the Cat's next door, sleeping on his chair. We're ready for this. Gone with standard flexible. These are the instructions at the moment. Very simple stuff. Try trying to keep it simple for the guys. But West Ham on the attack here. They're going to be tough. They're a, obviously under-23 team, but they will be... Well, most of our players are under 
I, 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 well, they're all. I will try and talk properly in a minute. And um, we're all 24 or under. There we go. Here come West Ham. Ah, oh, brilliant defending by. I don't know who that was, but here comes Palmer. Whipping a ball in. Mohamed! He loves a cup game, doesn't he? He's scored in the EFL Cup, and now he's scored in the Checker Trade Trophy. His third goal of the season. And that's the first time Craig Palmer has done anything this season. It's a cracking assist from him. Look, look at that cross. Beautiful. And Mohamed still a lot to do from that angle, but he managed to direct it into the back of the net. I think I'm feeling quite energetic because I had a large coffee. I don't really drink much coffee. I generally only drink water at home. Um, during the day. I do have tea and stuff in the morning and the evening. Here come West Ham. It's wide. Ooh. Oh. By the way, Alex Hall has handed in a transfer re request. Our backup keeper. Still on the lookout for a backup keeper. thing is, if I sign a better keeper than Sibzelis, I would feel bad knocking him out the first team. And then if I've got a better keeper than Sibzelis and he's not playing, he'll just moan that he's not playing. But Sivzelis is just so important to us, as we saw at the end of last season when he got injured. We conceded seven bloody goals. I'm going to say com this isn't always the best thing to guard, guard against complacency, but I'm going to go for it today. Um, so Marlow's tired. He's going to come off. We're going to put Patrick Dibber on. He's going to play in his preferred standard central midfield. Support. Standard supports. I can't talk. What's going on? Let's let's start this before. Just to shut me up. There we go. We are playing at the um, London Stadium actually. I've just realised this is a big old stadium we're playing in. I bet there's hardly any people here though because it's the Checker Trade Trophy. I think West Ham played their Checker Trade Trophy games this season, which they did fail in miserably, at Dagenham and Redbridge's ground, I, I think. As they hit the post. We've probably got about three fans in here. It's not a lot. It's not a long trip up to, to East London, really, from Rygate. Can we hang on to this result? I'm going to bring Larry Uder off. I'm going to chuck on Brady Chick, who scored a couple goals for the under-23s recently, and hope that he can maybe get us an important second goal for us. Here's Stephen Dean with the throw-in. Back to Murray. Into Diaz. Out wide to Greg Cross, who... I thought he was giving the ball away there, but it was actually quite a good ball to Brady Chick. Here's Diaz again with that 16 on passing. Important player for us now. Mohamed, lovely ball back to Cr Greg Cross. What's he going to do? It's back to Paddy Murray. Into Dibber, who finds Palmer. Brady Chick, he scores. Cracking finish there, hitting it across the keeper. I thought he was going to go near post, but he goes far post and he gets his first goal of the season. We're 2-0 up. This has been pretty comfortable, I must say. They've... They've had their chances, but they've not taken them. Look at this. Great, great finish into the back of the net. And it's a very pleasing result at the moment. I'm going to bring Danny Bai off. This is when we capitulate. He's on a yellow. He's tired. Let's give Charlie Lofts his first game of the season. He's just come back from injury. Let's give a boost. Charlie Lofts is a good player. We know he can make a cop up, cock up every now and then, but so can Danny Bai and Reese Walker. Charlie Lofts has actually been relatively solid for us the last couple of seasons. But that's the commentator's curse, isn't it? Here's a corner. Mohamed whips it in. Reese Walker scores from the corner. I've actually changed the corner tactics, and that has worked. I went for near post. Reese Walker's at the near post. He's got decent heading. I think not spectacular, but he's all right. And he gets above the near post there, the near post man, and he heads it in for 3-0. Well, this is going swimmingly, isn't it? And uh, the bubble machines are probably breaking down at that, that goal. They're disappointed now, the West Ham fans have decided to turn up. Yeah, there's only 4,617 people with one of, a one away fan. Only one of you turned up for this. That is absolutely hilarious. Who is it? Obviously, you can't comment saying it's you because there'll be 10 of you saying it's me, it's me. And obviously it's not. There's only one. One person turned up for this match. <laughs> that is great. Here's Palmer. Can we make it four late on? He's had the shot. It's saved by Naylor. <laughs> Flying through the air like a swordfish. And that should be... Why like a swordfish? Swordfish don't fly. What am I on? 3-0 win. I'm very happy with that. Let's just double check this. One away fan. So there was one person just in that away stand there by himself. All lonely. Poor chap. I hope I went up and just sat with him in the second half. That would have been nice. Reese Walker, man of the match, 8.5 performance. Very solid. I don't know why he's sometimes bold and sometimes he's ginger. It's very strange. I suppose 
it's just the thing with Football Manager 2017, the faces, the hair, it was always changing. As usual this season, the under-23s are banging in loads of goals. Jack Young and Bradley Berry with four between them in this game against Eastleigh. The under-23s are doing really well. They just score so many goals, it's crazy. Let's just have a look. Look, they've won every single game so far this season in the groups. This Jack Young with a hat-trick against Maidenhead, Brady Chick with two against Oxford, and of course two each for Young and Bradley Berry. Um, of course, we have released a few players. There's not as many strikers now. In fact, Young, Berry and, and Ormsby are the only three out-and-out -out strikers in the under-23 team now. Um, although, Berry and Young, are, they're all also in the first team, so they might not always play. It might be down to Dan or Dan Ormsby still at the club, which is a bit of a surprise. You guys decided to keep him. He's been quiet. He's been happy to just play for the under-23s. Scored the odd goal. He's still here. He's been here since that second season, remember. Signed him for 1K, scored seven goals. Scored one goal the following season and hasn't featured since then. And Stuart Warren, by the way, has decided that he wants to stay at the club. He's been taken off the transfer list. I'm happy because he's a decent left back. He's a decent backup for Greg Cross. He's solid, not particularly gifted technically, but he's all right. Uh, very good mentally and pretty decent physically as well. So he's a good backup. Probably play some under 23 football just to get him fit again. And he's, I've given him a contract um, because he was on a rolling contract, which was quite a lot of money anyway. I think this is probably cheaper for me to have him a proper contract. And it does mean I can actually train him. Um, I'm tr currently training crossing which I think is important. So next up is Blackpool in the league, who are currently towards the bottom of the table. Oh no, Ollie Barber has fallen out with Jack Young. I asked Jack Young to shadow him, and it's not quite worked out. We can't blame Jack Young for that. It must be Ollie Barber's fault. Yeah, I've not really done tutoring up to this point because I'm not, I've not been able to. All the players are so young. And some of the older players, like Jack Young and, and Grant Ward, aren't really good enough to, to shadow players. I think Bradley Berry shadowing someone now though. We've got a couple of suspensions going into this game. Reese Walker somehow already picked up five ye yellows, which is a bit disappointing. So Charlie Lofts has to come into the back line and Paddy Murray is on international duty with Kevin Miguel suspended as well. So Sean Black is going to come into the midfield, our Scottish defensive midfielder. Interesting. Hmm. At home against Blackpool at the Region Rover Stadium. Sibs Ellis in goal. I'm sticking with Stephen Dean. No reason to change it after that last game. I've obviously had to change it off. So we'll see how Bayern Lofts get on together at the back. Greg Cross at left back. Keeping Marlow in the middle as well. He was all right. Black comes into the team. Diaz keeps his place on the left-hand side of midfield. And the same front three of Palmer, Uda and Mohamed. They worked well together in the last game. Once again, no reason to change it. On the bench, we do have Spencer Drury as an option. He's come off the bench three times this season. Hasn't started a game and hasn't scored. He needs to impress me when he comes off and to try and break into the first team please smash that like button if you're still enjoying the series that would be very much appreciated blackpool are lining up with wingers which could be a problem because remember we've only got fullbacks we've got no wingers or wide midfielders defending the flanks so uh not entirely sure how to deal with this i guess we'll find out won't we in time as to how dangerous they will be Maybe I shouldn't be as narrow this time. Maybe balanced play. Will that stop them from getting down the wings? I don't know. Let's stick with this for now. We beat West Ham 3-0. No, it's the only under... I know it was only the under 23s, but still. I think that's an impressive result. Lots more of you have turned up for this game. Thank you. One person at the London Stadium. Poor guy. Not even that far to go. Here's Mohamed with the corner. Can we get an early lead? Bye. Back to black. It's... Back all the way to Mohamed. And Diaz gets his first goal for the club. Guillermo Diaz finds the back of the net. It was an interesting corner. And then Sean Black played it back all the way to Mohamed, who put a cross in. And it's a good finish. It did deflect off the defender. But still, good goal. And we're 1-0 up. Here's a throw-in from Greg Cross. It's into Black again, getting involved. It's all the way back to Christian Marlowe. We lost the ball, but Mohamed! It somehow broke to him, and he gets his fourth goal of the season. That's his first league goal, though. That's really good news for him. It was pretty fortunate, because Greg Cross headed it in. Here's Marlowe getting tackled. But look, it <laughs> what the hell? And Mohamed hit it first time into the corner. Lovely stuff. And we're 2-0 up. And Mohamed won that header, but couldn't control it 
Blackpool will look to try and get back into the What was Greg Cross doing there? I have no idea. And now he's on the ball. Thumping it up the pitch for Larry Uda, who can't win the header. But in comes Danny by and Mohammed's through again. He can't win. Can't win it. My, high, my voice was getting higher and higher there. <laughs> and it's thumped up. Oh no, where's Charlie Lofts? Where's the defence? Charlie Lofts. Oh, he somehow ran through his... Ma oh, it's another bloody own goal. There was literally no one in the box as well. There was no need to do anything. These own goals are very frustrating. It's crossed in. There's no one there. Look. He's a, a shout from Sivzelis there, or from someone would have said, don't worry about it, we can clear it. But, ah, uh, and Mohammed's got injured. Suddenly, it's gone from a very positive situation to a not-so-good one. And Joseph Mohammed's going to have to go off for a pulled hamstring, so that's a, a few weeks out injured, isn't it? However, half-time, it's 2-1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my players to play it short and retain possession. Keep hold of the ball. Sean Black is tired on a 6.4 as well. Apparently not playing particularly well, but we'll keep him on for now. What I could do, in fact, do I make changes? Will I regret making changes? Pulling the, him back there into his more natural position and then bringing on Dibber for... Craig Palmer, he's not played particularly well again, and playing Dibber in the middle. In fact, Diaz can play there. Deep line playmaker. Dibber can play there. Support. Okay, we, we don't need three up front, do we? This is the sensible thing to do. You know it's the sensible thing to do, so we're going to go and do it. Let's try and control the midfield area. And Sean Black can play as an anchor man and just hold the team together, hopefully. And here's Drury into Uda. Can we get an, an early attack going? Uda's slammed it up the pits. Drury's not going to catch that. He's got 16 acceleration, but it, not even he can catch that one. Let's just encourage... Courage the lads. Half an hour to go. Can we hold on to this result? It's not been a huge number of chances in this game. In fact, there's been zero clear-cut chances. Sean Black's tired, but I think we need to keep him on for now. I'm going to take off Larry Uda. I'm going to bring on Brady Chick. We're going to, I'm not going to go defensive. I'm going to keep it standard for now. Highlight straight away. I haven't even made the change. And here's Uda through to Spitzer Drury who can't catch it. And it's good defending by Blackpool in the end. They get an equaliser. It'd be very annoying because their first goal, of course, was, a, was an own goal. That's headed away. Blackpool, is this going to be an opportunity for them? It is. It's 2-2. What was I just saying? It'd be annoying. It is annoying because we don't deserve to lose this game. We're going to have to go attacking, aren't we? I'm actually going to move Diaz into a more advanced role. I'm going to basically go down the middle. Go a bit more direct. It, it, it's annoying. We had the ascendancy at the start. They got a lucky goal back and then I was just sort of hoping to, to hold on. We've never really been that attacking in this game. Maybe a draw is a fair result on the balance of play. But it's annoying that it's a needless own goal that puts them back into it. And then where's the marking? What are the defence doing? ridiculous and it's going to finish 2-2 which is annoying unless we can get a chance a shot on goal here nope Blackpool can now break but there's no one up the pitch for them and this should easily be mopped up by Dean what is he playing at what is he why is he taking so long <laughs> and Sivzelis gives the ball away after thumping it up the pitch and Greg Cross easily puts a tackle in 20 seconds to go Chick heads that on Spencer Drury can't catch that and surely, this that will be it. Five seconds. Dibber into Spencer Drury. Someone have a shot? Nope. That's it. 2-2. Two, two. Disappointing in the end. Pretty balanced game, though, on the whole. But we've thrown away a two-goal lead. We got the goals too early. Charlie Loft, 6.2. Not great from him coming into the team. And Sean Black, 6.1. Didn't have a good game, apparently. Craig Palmer also disappointing once again today. So... We're still unbeaten in the league for a few games, but we are in a mid-table position. We're ninth, just outside the playoffs. It's, it's very close. It's early days. It's six games into the season. So it could change completely. We have no idea where we're going to finish this season. Next few games then. Port Vale, away from home, who have just been relegated, so they should be a tough team, theoretically. Doncaster Rovers, Cheltenham Town, AFC Fylde, Barnet, and then Portsmouth two times in a row. I think I'll take on Portsmouth in the league. I'll show that one. And Stockport County now. Portsmouth, we want to get revenge, remember, because they did beat us one of the last games of the season. Mohammed's out to four, for four to five weeks. That is a blow. 
Uh, Chris Holmes, you're probably wondering what's happened to him. He's out injured. He's in the under-23s now. Decided to drop him down. He's not been great for us, really. Anyway, thanks for watching today's episode 69. I'll see you soon, guys. Yeah.